Hey folks, welcome back to another video. And today I want to replace again another VST plugin and I don't give up until every plugin company on the planet hates me. Uh, but I don't think companies actually hate me for that because with these plugins, you still have an advantage over Bitwig Studio because of the nice, you know, GUI and the presets, you know, it's also a sleek bundle. And sometimes, most of the times, people uh, still own Shaper Box before everything. And then, you know, they add additional modules like here, the Reverb Shaper. And the Reverb Shaper works like this. Um, you have a line, you draw in a line here. And this line represents basically the send effect. Um, and it changes the amount of audio you send into um, a convolution reverb. You can change the convolution settings in here, um, change how the reverb sounds basically, and then this one here changes the amount of send effect. Um, there are also some additional things. You can change the volume, decay settings, your size, dry and wet, and so on. There's also here um, an band splitting effect i think i guess you can remove the lows here from the reverb and so on so uh, pretty usual stuff um and this one is pretty cheap to your 40 bucks for me um if you own shaper box it's i think it's automatically included with all the other effects here but like I said, sometimes you can just do do these things here, like drive, noise, filter. I, I think you can replicate everything in Bitwig Studio pretty much. Um, um, so yeah. So in Bitwig Studio, we have here a dry drum loop. So first idea is, of course, you put a convolution reverb on that. But here again, everything goes into the reverb. And even when we modulate here the mix, basically, um, if you pull up the mix after we stop the audio, you can still hear uh, audio ringing out because everything still goes into the plugin, right? And is processed even though you pull down the mix knob to zero. So the mix just mixes basically the wet and the dry signal and the wet signal is always there. Everything goes into the plugin. So you can do this by, or you can prevent this by using the convolution reverb on an FX channel here, right? Something like this. Put this on 100% and then on the main channel, you use basically on the left side, the ascent effect. So this is something you can do. Um, so you automate, or you can use then a curve modulator and maybe modulate this here on a, on the project panel, right? Use a curves modulator here, and then uh, just modulate this. Um, this is something you can do, but I don't like to use here FX return channels most of the times. So what I do is I just put this back here onto the main channel. Uh, where we where we have the drum loop and on here I keep the mix at 100% and I add one chain device which is just an, a simple container here I put this convolution into the chain device and inside of the chain device in front of the convolution reverb I use a tool device and here I pull down the volume to zero so now we basically cut off the convolution reverb from the audio input right you can't hear anything uh, because the audio goes into the chain. The chain itself is mixed 100% and here basically the tool device cuts off all the audio. So we go here to 30%. So we can still hear the dry signal and we can use now a curve modulator here. Uh, put this into uh, groove mode, uh, unipolar mode, then one bar right click reset and then we want to feed basically the snare into the reverb right we modulate here the tool um with that and now we feed basically only the snare into the reverb right i put the click limiter at the end Okay. 
you can see every time the snare comes in, we open up here the tool device and the tool device then pushes the audio into the convolution reverb. Of course, you can change here the convolution setting also. Um, you don't have you, you don't have access to all the convolution presets of the reverb shaper, uh, but you have other options too here, right? Um, so this is something you can do. It's a, it's an easy setup, um, and if you just put the tool device here and duplicate this here, um, let's put this here. Um, and just modulate here the tool. Uh, by this, it's basically now the volume shaper, right? Let me put this here into eight. So this is the volume shaper basically for you. So you can replicate the, the volume shaper and here the reverb shaper pretty easily inside of Bitwig Studio. Another thing you can do, um, let me just remove this here again. Um, is if you use the delay plus device um, and put this here into um, this free delay time mode um, 100 percent we don't need blurring here and let's see how this sounds So um, when you change the delay time, of course you change the pitch. Um, if you don't like that, you can go to the left side here of the delay plus and you can see on changes free pitch and put this into fade, cross fades when changing delay times. So now if you change the delay time, it doesn't change the pitch. So now if you use a curve module here on that, modulator, curve modulator, groove, unipolar, uh, the bar, reset, and put this maybe into eight. So something like this, and then you change the delay timing. You have something unique um, that's probably not possible with time shaper nor with uh, reverb shaper because I, I don't think with reverb shaper you can change delay time. So it's also kind of a unique effect without you know having the having the pitch changed over time. So this is something you can do with delay plus um, put here this into fade mode um, you can also leave it in real pitch if you like the effect that's more like a turntable scratch effect So the update rate is basically how fast you update between these modifications here and change between different um, delay plus settings. Um, so you can play around here with the update rate. It has also an effect sometimes on the sound. Okay, so um, this just as a side note. Um, because I played around with Delay Plus um, the recent times pretty often. Um, I also want to give you here an idea for melodies. Um, so let's use here Polymer. And I just paint in here, just, it's just a random melody, it's not about the melody. Something like that. And we put a lot of your reverb on that, so it sounds a bit nicer. And maybe a delay. 
So we have this melody. So we have this melody, and at the end here, we use a delay plus. And I did some presets here. I'll probably share on my Patreon soon. Um, so let's say delay plus halftime reverb. So I tried to do a halftime plugin just with delay plus. It's not possible because every time you jump basically here with the delay unit scaler back to the original position here, you get some kind of artifacts. And I try to remove these artifacts by using your curve modulator. And every time the jump happens here, you can see I pull down basically the high end. Uh, but it's not really working, but it's still sounding nice. You can hear it sounds one octave lower, it's pitched down one octave lower. But every time we basically jump from here to here, we have the small little click artifact that goes into the reverb and it gives you the special sound but I kind of like it sometimes but it's not really clean actually so this works basically by using here uh, quarter notes eight quarter notes and then I'm using here a classic LFO with the ramp uh, to one and I'm modulating here basically the delay on its scalar by uh, 50% and then I'm using a curve modulator where I pull down here the high end every time uh, at the beginning here and the end right you can see this here basically to remove the artifacts before going into um, the delay feed um, or the feedback chain okay so um, this is basically something I want to show you I put these presets probably on my um, Patreon I think um, there's also double time half time um, yeah that's basically half time this, this is just without having the blur amount here but it does basically the same You can hear the effect, right? The, the glitch here. But sometimes on melody lines or on pet sounds, it doesn't even matter that much. You just want to have the same sound one octave lower um, to layer it below it to have some kind of um, ambient effect. Um, yeah, so like I showed you, you can replicate basically the reverb shaper uh, from Cable Guys pretty easily inside of Bitwig Studio, uh, just with a chain device, a tool device, and the convolution reverb. And you can use Delay Plus um, in the fade mode, also with some curve modulations and um, modify time and delay time and uh, reverb time and create some interesting effects with that. Uh, and I think it's not possible with the reverb shaper. I, I, I haven't actually bought this and I haven't tried it out, but I think you can also, you only can change your basically the send effect. I'm not sure, maybe you can change the, the decay time here. And I think there's also something like when you go down with the volume of the reverb, it chokes the, the feedback or it um, clears the feedback buffer or something like that that's not really possible with Bitwig uh, but maybe give this here a try I think there's probably a trial version up on the website um, I put the link in the description so no one is uh, actually angry on me <laughs> um, that's it for this video thanks for watching leave a like if you like the video subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next video bye